polyangitis, multiple inflamed blood vessels. That's the same as vasculitis. Too easy. But something a little bit more mysterious is this granuloma situation. What's that all about? Hello Dr. Humans, welcome back to the channel and today's video which is a little primer on anca vasculitis. Anca vasculitis is a small vessel vasculitis that can be nasty. It can threaten organs and it can threaten people's lives. And so even though it's rare, we as Dr. Humans do need to know just a little bit about anca vasculitis. So what we're going to do today is conceptualize anca vasculitis at the immunology level so you can really visualize what is going on when it comes to the pathophysiology of this condition and from there you'll be able to stack on even more know-how and if you want to stack on that know-how with me then i have some goodies for you first up there's my free gn tutorial over on the website it's basically the cheat code for learning gn and i want you to have it and of course, like any good GN tutorial, there is a section in there all about anca vasculitis. And after that, if you do want to take things up a notch, then I have another tutorial, anca vasculitis, the advanced class, included within our Reno for the Written program, where we unpack everything you could possibly need to know about anca vasculitis for your exams. So if either of those sound like something you need in your life, then click the link below and head on over to grab your goodies. And now, let's jump into the pathophysiology of anca vasculitis. So in terms of anca pathophysiology, anca stands for anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody. So basically, the key is in the name, we have an antibody that's directed against something inside this neutrophil. Now, how enough <laughs> did we develop an antibody to something inside the neutrophil. So this is like with many autoimmune conditions, it always seems to be this answer of genetic predisposition in any one person meeting something external, something, a stimulus in the environment, um, such as an environmental exposure or a infection. That's very common would be an infection. So say, for example, we get this infection, this little guy comes along and this neutrophil responds to this infection. As part of that, the neutrophil will release its net and it will release contents of itself into the extracellular space. So now we have the contents of that neutrophil on the outside of the neutrophil. Then a little dendritic cell comes along and samples the area. And it may, in that process, sample some of these substances from inside the neutrophil. Then it'll take that to the T cell and see what the T cell thinks, right? So the T cell might recognize this as self and say, no, we're not responding to that today. Or the T cell might say, oh, actually, that looks like something I need to attack. And if it does recognize it as foreign and it does mount an immune response, then it will promote B cells to differentiate into plasma cells and produce antibodies against those things inside the neutrophil. So we have an antibody against something inside the neutrophil. But what are those antibodies directed against? And there are two main things in ankyvasculitis. There's proteinase 3 or PR3 and there's myeloperoxidase, MPO. Now, proteinase 3, or PR3, tends to hang out in the cytoplasm, so that's known as C anchor. And myeloperoxidase tends to be around the nucleus, and so that's perinuclear, or P anchor. But how enough are you meant to remember that? <laughs> so the answer is that C is the third letter of the alphabet, so C anchor goes with PR3. Too easy. So... It feels a little bit benign at first, right, to have an antibody against something that's inside the neutrophil, because then you think to yourself, well, these might never come into contact with each other, right? One's outside the cell and one's inside the cell. So surely we're safe, right? What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> and that's true until the neutrophil is primed. Oh my goodness, the whole game changes when the neutrophils are primed. So neutrophils are primed by the immune system when something's going on, by cytokines or whatever. And when they're primed and sort of getting ready to get involved in an immune response, they will actually place these MPOs and PR3s on their surface. So now we have a big problem, right? If we have this antibody in our circulation, now we have a massive problem. Now that antibody can come along and bind to those um, MPO or PR3 molecules 
And when it does that, this neutrophil will explode, <laughs> it will release its net, and we will get vasculitis. That happens. And in the background, we've also got this ongoing T cell response, um, sort of orchestrating this whole thing. And we've still got B cells turning into plasma cells and making more antibodies. <laughs> and in addition to that, we've got complement and neutrophils and complement are actually connected and they're connected in a couple of ways. But the main way that we need to know about for anchor vasculitis is via C5A. So let me show you that on this diagram. Now, we're not going to do all of complement today. I would not torture you like that. <laughs> but what we are going to do is I'm just going to show you where C5 comes into this whole situation. So you're probably aware you have three different ways to trigger your complement. That converges on C3 convertes and then C5 convertes. Beyond C5 convertes, we have C5A, which is what we're interested in for anchor vasculitis. And then we have C5B. Now, what's important to recognize is that these are two separate things. They do two different things. They are not connected. They are completely independent and separate. So C5B is going to go on to join up with 6, 7, 8, and 9 to form the membrane attack complex. But C5A is not. It has nothing to do with the membrane attack complex. C5A is an anaphylatoxin. And so what that means is that C5A is going to act as a chemoattractant, bringing immune cells into the area. And it's also going to, when those um, cells arrive, including neutrophils, it's going to activate them. So coming back to this diagram, we can see how this is all coming together to create this perfect storm of anchor vasculitis. And now in the mix, we have C5A, which is going to bind to the C5A receptor on the neutrophil, and that is going to... Um, attract more neutrophils to the area, but also prime this neutrophil. And we said at the start that when we prime a neutrophil, it places more of these molecules on the surface and then the antibodies can bind to those molecules. And the whole thing is just this big vicious cycle. And ankyvasculitis can be extreme and very nasty. Now, you're probably aware that ankyvasculitis has a few different clinical phenotypes. We have GPA, granulomatosis with polyangitis, MPA, microscopic polyangitis, and eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis. <laughs> now, GPA and MPA have neutrophils at their centre, so everything I just showed you very much applies to those conditions. Whilst eGPA, on the other hand, is a very similar process, but this time eosinophils are at the centre. And these names do seem like a bit of a mouthful, but they actually make a lot of sense. So polyangitis, we can translate into multiple inflamed blood vessels. So that's the same as vasculitis. Too easy. But something a little bit more mysterious is this granuloma situation. Both GPA and EGPA have granulomas in their titles. So what's that all about? So what I forgot to mention is that sometimes granulomas form in ankyvasculitis. And a granuloma is just a collection of macrophages. That's all it is, just a collection of macrophages. So in addition to everything I just said, we'll have some monocytes that are drawn here and monocytes differentiate into macrophages. And when they come here, they're going to help to contribute to the immune response. But another job of macrophages is kind of to mop up the debris and kind of clear the area, sort of put an end to this whole immune reaction. But sometimes if they can sort of clear up the area and clear the debris, what happens is they'll form like a kind of a little wall around it. So they're just going kind to of wall it off with like a bit of hope, magic sprinkles. So they're not going to fix it, they just wall it off. And so you might see a granuloma in some of those types of ankyvasculitis. And sometimes when there is a granuloma, these macrophages kind of fuse together to become giant cells. So if you're reading and you see giant cells, that's what that means. So that was the pathophysiology of ankyvasculitis in a nutshell. And if you do want to learn more about ankyvasculitis, definitely check out those resources I mentioned over on the website. And otherwise, stay tuned here on YouTube for some more higher learning. Bye!